Regulars to the Knox YouTube channel might have become accustomed to wheelies, burnouts, and ridiculously powerful motorcycles, but in actuality, we love all things two-wheeled. And today, something quite different. This is the Super Soco CPX. Now this is the most powerful electric scooter in the Super Soco range with a claimed power of four kilowatts, 171 newton meters of torque, a range of 87 miles, a top speed of 56 miles an hour, and a recharge time of between three and four hours. Now Super Soco UK claim that this is a fast and nimble 125 killer. And in this video, we're gonna be putting the bike to the test and really testing out that claim. Is this the nail in the coffin for the combustion engine scooter? Well, we're gonna find out. Okay, little ride out on the uh, CPX. So, I've been using this, the CPX, for probably three or four days commuting to and from work. I've got a 14 mile commute to home. Obviously, we do live in a rural setting here in, in Cumbria and maybe that is not the absolute perfect uh you know picture perfect scenario for a scooter but actually do you know what i just discredit that because you know i had scoot i've owned scooters you know um and i used them extensively that was the first vehicle i ever owned and i lived here and i used it to get around so you know, I don't think there is necessarily a perfect customer for this. Um, but yeah, I love scooters. I've owned them. I've loved them. I've ridden them in all sorts of weather. I've ridden them in snow, all sorts of stuff. So I'm a real fan, um, even though I ride a, a big motorcycle now. The first thing you notice on this scooter is that obviously it's electric. And if you haven't ridden a electric scooter or vehicle before the sensation is very different well basically there isn't any you just sort of gather speed um, the other thing is um, yeah we've got some different riding modes on here you've got one uh, riding mode one um, which is eco um, which knocks you right back actually to about 28 uh, miles an hour um, so it doesn't stop your acceleration up to that speed, but it knocks you back. Two, I think, takes you up to about 40, and then three, that's full full power, basically. Um, I'll just take you round and round about. Um, yeah, so I've just kept it in three. Next thing you notice about the Super Soco is that yeah it's not yeah it's not that fast um words like perky peppy zippy nippy none of those words should be used in the same sentence as this uh scooter this is not uh, a peppy or quick or nippy scooter it will gather speed i'll give it that it does gather speed um but it's definitely not fast. But it is a comfortable place to be, you know? Um, the, the screen is really great. You can tuck behind that and feel very shielded. All of the dials are lovely to use. Actually, the, the lights are pretty good as well. Um, obviously, it's on low beam all the time. Um, put it into head, to, to, to full beam, they're actually pretty good. Um, I wouldn't bother with the riding modes because, you know, it just doesn't need them. Um, the indicators work fine. Come on, can we do it? Can we do him? Can we do him? No. So you can see, I mean, luckily today we've got no headwind, so there's very little wind out. So 
I'm cruising here at like 57 uh, miles an hour which is obviously the sort of speed that you ideally would be on uh, on these sort of A roads and that's what my commute is and obviously on a scooter you know it's full throttle everywhere and trying to slipstream traffic as much as you can if I can tuck behind a lorry at some point um, then obviously that'll just pull me on but hopefully this gives you a good little feel of what this has been like to uh, commute on actually do you know what I've, 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 I've enjoyed myself on this on this uh, scooter I think it's been quite good and definitely I would consider a scooter just to commute to and from work on I mean you know there's something just like easy about them that you can just jump on and ride it you know it doesn't feel like you've got a big faff to do I don't know um, it's probably not that much less faffy than a than a big motorcycle but it just feels it just something about jumping on a scooter is just great and going out wherever you want so I really like that obviously on this thing there are some downsides and we'll come on to that in in the review so I think you've seen me uh, long enough going on a road um, on a straight road unfortunately it's not that much more uh, dynamic than that and a couple of roundabouts and stuff and now we're going to take you into the review and tell, what, tell you what I think about this CPX scooter so the Super Soco CPX we're going to start off on what is good about this scooter now the first thing that's really good is that it's an electric vehicle and on the assumption that the electricity power in this scooter was produced in a renewable way whether that's wind solar or tidal this solution should be much more environmentally friendly and sustainable for our planet than a, a, a combustion engine motor and that is a good thing and whether you like it or not electric vehicles will form a bigger part of our lives going forward with the UK government actually committing to a date of 2040 where they're going to stop the sales of combustion engine uh, motorcycles, scooters, cars you know it's really really important that we're investing that we're developing products like this so that we've all got something to ride when that time comes next thing that's great about the Super Soco is the fact that it looks great in my opinion I think it's a really nice looking scooter I don't think you've got any compromises from whether it's petrol or whether it's electric I think it looks sharp I like the black I like the uh, the design features on it I really like the fact that they've got little things like the handlebar clamp has got the Super Soco logo in it and I just think overall the thing looks sharp for a scooter and I'm very happy with the way that it looks third thing that's great it's really really easy to use this um, similar to a petrol scooter you know take the immobilizer off put the key in turn the ignition and away you go it's you know you're not going to get confused with using this bike very very simple all the switch switch gear is really straightforward it's also really easy to operate how you're going to charge it up as well you definitely don't need a degree in electronic science you basically to charge it up you just plug it in here um, if you are going to put it in a garage overnight or if you want to take the batteries out and put them inside you know it's very easy to work out how to do that just take the big wires off to carry them inside and insert it into a standard wall socket in your home other cool thing about the CPX is it comes with a fantastic screen up the front which provides really really good weather protection so if it's raining it's really windy or it's very cold and you want to get some good shielding it's really possible with this so um, you know and because the engine doesn't make any noise whatsoever um, you took yourself behind this screen and because there's no noise coming from the motor and you know you're very well protected by this screen it kind of almost feels like you're in a car which is bonkers because you're actually on a scooter so there's really good weather protection available uh, on the CPX so now we're on to what's not so good about the CPX and the first thing that's not great is the range and while this is the two battery version which costs £4,700 in the UK after the £1,200 UK government grant that you get when you purchase this scooter the range is still not fantastic um, the claimed range is 87 miles but actually in practice we're getting between 18 and 23 miles per battery so that's a maximum of between 35 and around 45 miles 
total range. Um, so there's a big, big discrepancy there. Um, admittedly, we're not in a city, we're doing more rural miles, um, but you know, practically that is you know, what we're doing. Um, and because obviously the Super Soco hasn't got a huge amount of power, you need to full throttle it pretty much everywhere, which obviously in turn reduces uh, the amount of capacity that you've got for getting to where you need to go. And connected to that last point is that recharging this scooter is a real faff and it takes a long, long time. Now on the website it says it takes three hours to recharge a scooter, but we can assume that that is for the one battery version because actually in practice it took us six hours combined to charge up these two batteries, so that's three hours per battery. Now in an ideal world you could actually just plug directly into the scooter, but you'd need an inside garage for that because the charging station has some open grills and I don't think they'd uh, receive well the fact to getting wet so um, if you're not got the ideal setup you'd need to take the individual batteries out and into your house you have to bear in mind that these batteries are about 20 kilos each so they're really heavy so you imagine carting 40 kilos worth of batteries plus the charger into your house and then leaving it on for three hours a pop you know it's just a big hassle basically and you know ultimately you're only getting another sort of 35 to 40 miles worth of range anyway so it's a lot of work to get that benefit and because the batteries are actually located within the seat unit all of the storage that you might be expecting with a scooter like this is non-existent because actually the batteries take up all of the space so you can't put your helmet in here or anything else that you might have uh, hoped that you could put in basically it's also pretty slow as well. When I read the spec sheet and I saw 171 newton meters of torque, that's more than a KTM 1290 Super Duke R. I was kind of thinking, God, we're gonna have a right laugh here. I'm thinking wheelies, burnouts, the lot. We, I th you know, even though it's got a restricted top speed, I thought we were gonna have a right laugh. Well, there must be a different way they're measuring the torque figure on this electric vehicle in comparison to the standard testing measurement for motorcycles, because this thing ain't got 100. 70 newton meters of torque um, you know it's not particularly perky it's not particularly zippy it does gather speed nicely um, I'll give it that um, but it's just not fast and that means you really do need to sort of like full throttle it everywhere which is sort of what you'd normally do on a scooter anyway but don't read that figure and expect something fast because it isn't and the final downside about the CPX is that the brakes aren't great, to be honest. Um, this has got like a linked brake system, so it took me a little bit of time to work out really what was going on. But if you press the front brake, you actually really struggle to get the scooter to stop. You know, approaching roundabouts, I was thinking, crikey, am I going to get the thing to stop? And then I press the back brake and all of a sudden that's where all the power is. So what actually happens in practice is that the front brake operates the front brake um, but there's not a lot of power in the front braking system to be honest and um, you definitely need more than just the front brake which is weird because normally on a motorcycle you're doing like 99 percent of your braking with your front brake all of the power resides in the back brake linking system which links the front and the back but the real problem is here that when you do apply it quite strongly because the two are linked you just end up doing a massive skid everywhere as soon as you apply the brakes now that's not massively a problem for me because i'm quite often doing skids on my motorcycles because i'm just a bit of um an idiot i suppose um but you know for new riders and just guys you know particularly if you're doing like emergency stops and you're in that situation you are going to lock up that rear wheel and that's quite intimidating potentially for you so just be a little bit uh, careful of how you are applying that and particularly in the cold and wet it's just going to lock up so you've got to get used to that sensation a little bit so all in all i really wanted to love the super soco cpx and we're normally really positive about the motorcycles and scooters that we review at knox and i really hope that electric scooter technology was further on than it clearly is but i've got to be honest here when I first got my scooter, um, when I was sort of 16, 17, it opened up a whole new level of freedom for me. No longer was I confounded to home and getting transport from mum and dad and public transport. I was a free man. I could go wherever I wanted and do whatever I wanted. And boy, did I ride that scooter everywhere. I rode it in the wind, I rode it in the rain, I rode it in snow, ice. 365 days of the year and wherever I wanted we got up to some right adventures 
The problem is, is with this is that it just doesn't offer that same level of freedom. I could just about do my commute um, on it and get there and back, but in reality, you know, I couldn't do the other trips on top of that that I'd need to. So, you know, if my wife calls us up, can you get milk on the way home? I'm sort of calculating, oh, is it far enough to the shop? You know, have I got enough range to get there basically? And, you know, therefore that kind of makes it not a viable transport option for me personally. Um, and I think that's a shame and I'm really hoping that they keep on developing it. Now, it, you know, in a different scenario, if you're in London and you've got a two mile commute every day, but it takes you half an hour on public transport, this Super Soco CPX might work for you because you know you're only going a short distance. You're nipping in between traffic and so on, um, and the public transport is, lot, is a lot longer. So that might work for you. But just consider, actually, if that is you and I'm me, I could buy both of us Peugeot Speedfight 125s for the same money as pretty much that this costs and I'd solve both of our issues. We'd have more performance, we'd have a lot longer range and we'd probably have a happier life too. Having said all that, I really hope that Super Soco and other electric scooter manufacturers can keep on developing and making better products. And I really hope that they're incentivized by the respective governments to do exactly that. Ultimately, we're all gonna be reliant on it in the future, that level of development. But for now, and as it stands, I think the petrol engine scooter will be around for some time longer. So I really hope that you've enjoyed that. I'm gonna put all the links in the description for the gear that I've been wearing. Please like the video, please comment. Love to hear about what you think about this scooter and everything else that we're doing at Knox. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.